Welcome back to another YouTube video. And today what I want to discuss is what is likely my current favorite directional squat cue, which is pulling your belt to your heels. So we're gonna get into what that means, what is a directional squat cue in the first place, and all of that, but to kind of proceed that a bit, where did this come from? On one of my stories recently, I broke down step by step the main things I'm thinking during each aspect of the squat process, from the setup, to the unrack, to the walkout, to the, to the bracing, to the descent. Uh, and you can actually go on my story highlights on my Instagram and check that out if you'd like to, as well as I'm actually gonna do a full video step-by-step -step breaking every single one of those down on powerlifting now in early 2024. So make sure to be on the lookout for that. But in this video, I simply wanna talk about the belt to heels squat cue. And as an added bonus, we're actually gonna do a part one and part two with part one being on my channel as you're watching right now and part two being on Natalie Richards' channel. Uh, if you don't know who Natalie Richards is, I coach her and she recently won the world championships at the fit, on the 57 and a half kilo class and won best overall lifter. So one of the best, if not the best female lifter in the world right now. She has a great YouTube channel. What she's gonna be doing in part two is actually taking you through her squat workout where she's implementing this cue and giving feedback as an athlete of how she implemented it, how she feels, and just any context and, and, and kind of uh, advice she has of how that worked into her squat pattern and improved it. So make sure after this video, go check out her video as well for the complete picture of this belt to heels directional squat cue. So first, what is a directional cue? And for some that might be obvious, but there's probably plenty of people also watching this video that when I say directional cue, they're kind of like, what is that? Two very, very common ones that we hear a lot is something like sit back or drive the knees forward. We're taking some aspect of our body, whether it's an actual body part uh, and, or possibly what we're gonna get to belt to heels, an actual component that we're adding, something in relation to our body and moving it in a specific direction and translating that way. And while they can be useful, uh, one issue with a lot of directional cues is that they do not translate the same to all lifters. And if you've watched some of my videos in the past, you know I'm not a huge fan of the sit back cue for that reason, because the amount we sit back or the amount we hinge based on our stance width, based off our leverages, all that kind of stuff greatly differs. So where our hips go back to, and do, does a lifter even need to think about hips back, very much depends on the individual lifter. And then the same thing with knees forward. The amount our knees travel forward have a lot to do with our stance width. If we're wider, they're gonna travel forward less based on how long our femurs are, all the different factors of, okay, what is the actual distance that my knees are going to be travel forward and how much do I need to actually worry about that? But that's where the cue belt to heels comes into play. And the fact that as I describe it, and then I'll show you in just a second here, the reason it works so well as a directional cue is in the vast majority of lifters, if not maybe all, it translates in the exact same manner in the exact same direction because everyone tends to be constrained in a similar manner. So to get into the belt to heels cue, I'm gonna bring out my nifty 13 millimeter tan belt that I haven't used in forever as it's gonna be much easier to see in the video. But when we are doing belt to heels, the reason why I find this to be such a great directional cue and how it translates to most lifters is if you look at pretty much any lifter squat, go ahead and look at their side view, no matter if they're short, tall, long leg, short leg, long torso, short torso, wide stance, short, narrow stance, no matter what, you're gonna see some similarities here. One is that in their initial setup, barring that they're doing something different outside of the scope that I probably recommend, AKA like a significant like pre-hinge or something, Outside of that, almost everyone, when you look at them, the front of their belt is likely going to translate with the middle of their foot or somewhere around it. You're, you're not gonna see the belt way out in front. You're not gonna see the way, belt way behind. You're gonna see that belt translating directly over that midfoot. And then as you descend, it's going to translate directly over the heel. So as I descend in my squat, no matter what I do, that bottom end of the belt is going to translate about directly over my heel. If it doesn't, if it's back further, I can't hit depth because I'm too far on my heel, or if it's too far forward, can't hit depth either, I can't suffice to do a proper powerlifting squat. So basically everyone, regardless if you're wide stance or your narrow stance, that front of the belt or kind of your belt buckle is going to translate from that middle of the foot to the heel as you squat. And to show this with a bar, you'll see something similar as well. Notice how in that initial position, for the most part, that bar is almost stacked directly over my belt and the belt buckle and sense. As I go down, no matter what I do, that bar is going to translate in front of that belt 
because the bar has to stay directly over my midfoot, whereas the belt is going to have to translate to my heel. And that doesn't matter if I hinge a lot or if I stay pretty upright, something's gonna have to give. There's no one, there's no one who's gonna stay directly upright in their squat. They're gonna have to have some forward, forward torso lean. So because of that, as the torso leans, that bar is gonna translate in front of the belt and the belt's gonna translate behind it. And so therefore, bar stays over midfoot, belt translates back, and is likely gonna be somewhere in the vicinity of your heel. So thinking of the directional pattern of the belt coming towards your heel, for the vast majority of lifters is gonna create a constraint to keep you managing your center mass and maintaining position. So now that we understand what a directional cue is and why, in my opinion, the belt to heels cue is a great directional cue that applies to the majority of lifters, let's look at the actual like implementation of it, why it works so well, the things that we need to do to get the most out of it. So first and foremost, to get the most out of this cue, we have to understand bracing mechanics. And we can go back, you can go back and watch my low bar bracing and setup video to get a little more info on this. But in general, when I'm bracing, I'm very much creating this intra-abdominal pressure and this brace that makes it feel like from my belly button to my sternum, aka basically the belt area, is one unit. I don't want them to translate or move separately. I want those to move as one unit together. Now, you may have some deviation from that. No one's gonna be perfect. I have some slight extension. That's not the issue, but for the most part, that's going to move as one unit. We don't want those moving separately. We don't want, we don't want the belly button translating one way and then that sternum translating another. They move together. So, what's in between those two usually? The belt, and that belt's creating that brace. So, if all we're thinking about is pulling that belt and this, this unit down towards our heels, that's naturally going to translate this forward lean position that's going to happen naturally in the squat no matter what. It's, we're gonna have to have some type of forward lean or hinge. Second, for the belt to translate directionally down towards the heel, which is gonna be a vertical motion with a slight horizontal back motion, not a lot, but to do that, the knees are going to have to move forward without me even thinking about it. Like if I want to get down to powerlifting depth and I think, okay, create this unit, this stack, manage my midfoot pressure, and then from there I'm gonna think, okay, I need to descend myself and just pull my belt towards my heel, naturally, the knees are gonna have to translate forward where they need to if I'm managing my foot pressure and I'm pulling that belt towards the heel. If I only think about the knees, I can't translate my belt towards my heel because it stays in front of it. And if I only think about pulling the belt towards the heel, well, eventually it's gonna translate back and behind the heel because there's just the constraint is the knees have to go forward. Pretty much when you think about this, it creates the movement around for the rest of the body just naturally to do what it needs to do. So in action, Really all I'm having to think about is one, managing foot pressure, and then two, pulling my belt towards my heel. Now there's other things to create the positions we want, and that goes back to the entirety of the setup and what I talked about in my story highlights and what I'll talk about more in powerlifting now. But once I get to this point and once I'm braced, the whole point of this directional cue is to hopefully minimize having to overthink much at all and really just bringing it down to two things. One, manage my, my foot pressure, make sure I have good heel and forefoot pressure, AKA midfoot. And then two, from there, after I brace, all I'm gonna do is manage that foot pressure while pulling that belt buckle or bottom of the belt down towards my heel and then return back up. Because if I do that in any other manner, if I think too much about pulling my belt back, well, I'm gonna get too far heel heavy, my knees aren't gonna translate forward. If I try and bring my belt straight down, it's just gonna be all knees. But if I very much think, brace one unit, manage foot pressure and pull, that belt to my heel, it's going to create a movement constraint that for the majority of lifters, regardless of your morphology or your stance width and all the things that you do with your squat, it's likely gonna put you in the position you need to with the correct hinge and correct knee drive that you need. Hopefully throughout this video, you got a really good idea of one, what is the belt to heel cue? Two, what is a directional cue and why a, the belt to heel cue is so beneficial in creating the right constraint for a majority of lifters, regardless of how they squat, and then be able to how it implement it, to really be able to bring this to light. Now, like any cue, this is not gonna work for everyone. Some people are gonna, gonna have a different context or implementation of it, which is the reason that any cue is not universal. It's just that for me, in my opinion, this cue tends to be a bit more universal than things like drive the knees forward, push the hips back. Because, if, like I said, if you look at most lifters, you're gonna see the exact same motion where that front of the belt is gonna start over the midfoot and it's gonna translate towards the heel. It's not gonna stay vertical and it's not gonna shift overly back. It's just gonna be the natural movement to be able to manage someone's center of mass and be able to uh, abide by powerlifting rules of getting that hip crease below the knee joint. As mentioned, 
Part two is gonna be on Natalie's channel. So if this video is beneficial and you wanna see from the athlete's perspective of them actually implementing this new cue, how they're kind of thinking about it, what they're cueing, their thought process, what they're feeling and the changes that they're going through, make sure to go check out Natalie's channel to see the full video on that. And I think that would be really beneficial to not only get the coaching perspective from myself, but then the athlete perspective from Natalie. As always, if you like the video, make sure to give it a like, uh, subscribe, share it. Uh, again, I do this for free with these videos uh, to be able to benefit the powerlifting world. So if you got a friend who you think this would be useful for or an athlete you think you'd be useful for, make sure to share it with them. Um, if you have any questions, make sure to comment below. I'd be happy to help. But until next time, peace.